Jurassic Park is known for a lot of things. It's known to be the best dinosaur movie ever created thanks in part to its amazing special effects, its thrilling moments, a great cast, and so on. Now I've discussed all of the things that Jurassic Park does right about a million times here on the channel, which really are just things that go without saying anyways. So I won't bore you with all of that stuff as I'm sure you already know all of it. However, one thing that I feel isn't known about Jurassic Park is the brief legal trouble it faced back in 1993 from a children's book author by the name of Jeffrey T. Williams, who wrote a book series between the years of 1985 and 1988 called Lost in Dinosaur World, which had a pretty similar concept to that of Jurassic Park. What's strange about these books is that they not only predate the 1993 movie directed by Steven Spielberg, but also Michael Crichton's 1990 novel that goes by the same name, and is what the movie is based on. As a result, Williams attempted to take both Michael Crichton and Steven Spielberg to court for this. And what results from this is definitely interesting, even if it was somewhat expected. Of course, before we get into any of this, you're probably asking, what is Dinosaur World? The main book that we're going to be talking about today is Lost in Dinosaur World, but this is just one book out of four total books in the series that was created between 1985 and 1988. This was actually the second book in the series, and it bore a lot of similarities to Michael Crichton's book and Steven Spielberg's movie. Lost in Dinosaur World, which again is the second book of the Dinosaur World series, is about a young boy named Tim who travels to a dinosaur nature preserve with his family. Everyone except Tim only purchased tickets for part of the tour, while he was able to get a ticket for a full tour. So he's able to travel through the rest of the preserve alone on the T-Rex Express, which is literally just a train that looks like a T-Rex, which is actually kind of a cool thought. Until he decides to get off the train after it makes a stop, which ends up leaving him behind. He follows the tracks to try and catch up with the train, and in the process runs into various types of dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals. After his long journey through the preserve, he eventually makes it back to the Express and his family. So just from this summary, you can probably tell the several similarities between this and the Jurassic Park novel and movie. All of the three are about a modern dinosaur themed park that can be toured by guests and have their dinosaurs and prehistoric animals within areas enclosed by electric fences. And like I said earlier, this is just one of the books that take place in this fictional preserve that's known as Dinosaur World. In total, there are four books and in order of their publication they go Dinosaur World, Lost in Dinosaur World, Explorers in Dinosaur World, and Sabretooth, A Dinosaur World Adventure. The reason why the rest of these books are relevant is because Williams claimed that Jurassic Park took other elements from these other books, mainly from book 1 and 3. Aside from book two, of course. I'll quickly summarize what the other books are about first, that way you have an idea of what we're working with here. The first book, Dinosaur World, is about a little girl named Mary and her father visiting Dinosaur World, where they simply learn about all of the prehistoric inhabitants and they encounter a bunch of them throughout. Uh, yeah, not much there. I already gave a summary about book two earlier, but book three, Explorers in Dinosaur World, is about a pair of siblings named Wendy and Pete who travel around Dinosaur World after winning a radio contest, and they tour it with their park guide. The final book in the series is also about a pair of siblings, but instead of traveling through Dinosaur World, they find themselves in the middle of a new attraction soon to open in Dinosaur World called Prehistorica, and it's filled with a bunch of Cenozoic wildlife. Now that you have the context of what these books are about, let's go ahead and take a look at what's similar and what's different between them and Jurassic Park. In comparison to Jurassic Park, the Dinosaur World books were much shorter, not very in-depth, had less intense themes, were meant to be educational along with being entertaining for kids, and so on. With all of this mentioned, you'd think that this would be different enough for Williams to maybe not bring up a lawsuit against Crichton, Spielberg, and company, but there were other aspects between the Dinosaur World book series and the Jurassic Park novel and movie that were similar. If we take a look at Williams' first book, Dinosaur World, Williams himself admits that while the Jurassic Park book or movie doesn't completely infringe on this specific work of his, there are similarities within the events that play out within the book that also seem to play out in Crichton's novel. 
For example, there's a part in which the characters encounter a small dinosaur, which is a Compsognathus, just like the little girl towards the beginning of Crichton's novel. Then there's another part in which a Tyrannosaurus chases after a herd of dinosaurs in the book, just like it does in Spielberg's movie. Book 2, Lost in Dinosaur World, seems to bear the most similarities between the two different works, at least enough to the point where Williams feels like his copyrighted work is being infringed upon. Some of the similarities between these two things include the child character of both works being named Tim, the concept as a whole about a dinosaur-themed park with prehistoric animals kept behind electric fences and inside enclosures so that guests can go and look at them safely, and if I'm correct, the first dinosaur they spot in the Lost in Dinosaur World book on the trip is the Brachiosaurus. And another thing that plays out that's pretty similar to Jurassic Park is that they witness a dinosaur nursery. All of the things that I just mentioned in some way, shape, or form can be spotted in both the Lost in Dinosaur World book and the Jurassic Park novel and or movie. Moving on to book three of Williams' Dinosaur World series, there was a part in which a pack of raptors, more specifically Deinonychus, had attempted to hunt down the trio of main characters to that story, which I suppose is somewhat similar to the encounters the characters in the Jurassic Park book had with the velociraptors there. Then we have book four, which is more about the inclusion of Cenozoic wildlife and didn't really have anything in common with Jurassic Park. Even Williams admitted that copyright for this specific book was not infringed, so there's no problem there. To some, this may seem like surface level stuff that is far outweighed by the sheer amount of differences the two works had, but Williams didn't seem like he was having it and suspected this was a little more than inspiration. Eventually, in 1993, Williams would take Michael Crichton, Steven Spielberg, David Kep, and all of the involved companies like Universal Studios and Amblin Entertainment to court for this. Now we have the lawsuit, which, as you can probably already guess, was somewhat cut and dry. While the idea of this very well-known science fiction author and Hollywood movie director creating a book and movie around a concept that was possibly stolen from a children's book author that, in comparison, is not very well known, was a concerning matter. But when you really stop for a second to compare the two works, you don't need a lawsuit to tell you that nothing here was stolen. Because nothing about the concept of a dinosaur zoo and the small-scaled elements that came with it was protectable under copyright law. But the reason why this is not 100% cut and dry is because according to the records for this case, there were several aspects of both of these stories that were looked into in depth to ensure this wasn't a case of copyright infringement. For example, the overall tone, concept, theme, setting, characters, and so much more were compared between the Dinosaur World books and the Jurassic Park novel and movie, and the final verdict from that is that it's completely different. According to the record, it states, Like plaintiff's work, Jurassic Park also centers around a type of dinosaur zoo. However, both the movie and the novel contain substantially more sophisticated plot and character development than plaintiff's work. Keep in mind, of course, they are referring to Williams as the plaintiff, if that's how you even pronounce that, throughout the case. The statement continues with, On the contrary, in all of plaintiff's work, the establishment of the park is a given. In Jurassic Park, the issue of how the park was and whether it should be developed is a substantial aspect of, if not central to, engagement of audience interest. The respective tales also end in fundamentally different manners. In each of plaintiff's stories, all of the characters emerge unharmed indeed. In plaintiff's work, there is never any physical contact between a human and a dinosaur, and there being no serious permanent safety questions, the park exhibits remain open or scheduled to open to the general public. In another section discussing the feel and concept, it states, Plaintiff contends that the total concept and feel of his works is substantially similar to the menacing mood conveyed in Jurassic Park. The court must disagree. Although plaintiff's work contains certain chase scenes and near misses, the overall tone and presentation of the work leaves the reader confident that the characters will emerge unharmed as they indeed do. In regards to theme, the record reads, Although plaintiff concedes that 
Jurassic Park is a much more complex work than that of plaintiff's work for children, he nonetheless contends that the works at issue are substantially similar with respect to theme. This common theme, plaintiff asserts, is that a visit to and tour of an animal park for prehistoric dinosaurs, if one were to exist, would not only be wondrous and exciting, but also very dangerous. And of course, the response to this was, the court cannot agree that this description accurately portrays the theme of Jurassic Park, or even necessarily plaintiff's work. Plaintiff's representation of Jurassic Park entirely abstracts the theme park adventure from its context and omits any reference to its fundamental story element of genetic engineering, ego, and greed. And of course, we have the differences between the settings. Plaintiff points to several similarities in the setting of the respective works. Indeed, the settings of the works are such that a reasonable jury could find them substantially similar. These similarities, however, all flow from the conceitedly uncopyrightable concept of a dinosaur zoo. Williams also tried to argue the similarity between the characters, more specifically how his child characters from Book 3, Peter and Wendy, relate to Tim and Lex in Jurassic Park along with the guide in the children's book named Jake Dumel and how he relates to Dr. Alan Grant. As far as the children goes from both materials, both are siblings, both of the boys like dinosaurs and are dinosaur enthusiasts and like to annoy their guides about it. As far as the adult guide characters go, both are adult males with expertise on dinosaurs that both end up being paternalistic towards the children they are with. These similarities wouldn't be seen as sufficient enough though. According to the record, with respect to their characters, the works are quite distinct. And it later says, the characters of the Dinosaur World books are much more thinly developed than those of Jurassic Park. No character infringement claim can succeed, however, unless plaintiff's original work sufficiently developed the characters at issue. I think you guys get the idea. I could go on with more because the trial continues to talk about other areas of the two works and how they differ, but again, I feel like this is enough for you guys to understand that this was a battle that Williams was going to end up losing. One of the things that was common with the arguments that Williams would make that would ultimately make him lose this case was that he was constantly selective on what he thought was infringing on his books which is not how copyright law really works. Sure, it's not a black or white area of law at all, but just picking and choosing events, characters, and ideas that are not only scattered throughout four of your children's book in no specific order, but are also not protectable under copyright law to try to use against a single book and movie that have a consistent and complex story that goes much deeper with the idea of a dinosaur zoo is just not enough to win your argument that this person stole from you. The Williams vs. Crichton case, which isn't the official name of it, I just gave it to it because it rolls off the tongue better, is one of those things that isn't really talked about a lot anymore. While I can't say for sure what kind of impact it had during the time it was happening, since that part of it wasn't all that well documented, it makes me believe that this was either not seen as a very huge deal, or it just kind of faded from public view over time. That being said, an interesting development would eventually come from this story, although I have no idea if it was a direct result or not. But a 40 minute Dinosaur World movie adaptation would actually be released in 1993, which loosely followed the events of the second book, which is what it was based after. The movie is about a brother and a sister that visit a dinosaur themed park, but get lost within it and they encounter a bunch of prehistoric animals and dinosaurs, one of them being a T-Rex. The movie had a tone that was similar to that of the books, so it was much more kid friendly and not very complex. One interesting thing about them is that the animatronics used for the dinosaurs were actually made by a company that I talked about in another video called Dynamation. This is significant because like Williams, Dynamation was also not the biggest fan of Jurassic Park, as they were actually in competition with them. To summarize, Dynamation specialized in allowing museums, fairs, and theme parks to use their dinosaur animatronics for prehistoric themed exhibits that they would set up for their younger audiences. But things got tense when Universal announced a movie adaptation to Jurassic Park that was going to use state-of-the-art tech that would 
revolutionize the state of both practical and digital effects in the movie industry. Because of this, everyone's eyes were on this new movie and away from the dinosaur animatronics made by Dynamation. This would be one of several main factors that would eventually put them out of business, but before that would happen, they attempted to get as much work as possible to stay afloat. One of these was presumably the Lost in Dinosaur World movie, and while the Dynamation animatronics look cool, I have to say that it doesn't make the dinosaurs look real at all. Their animatronic styles make them move way too robot-like to pass them off as real dinosaurs. Not to mention, the movie as a whole is just kind of a cringe fest. I know it was meant for kids, but man, that one song they sing during it is, uh, it's just fucking weird. <laughs> I couldn't tell you how much of this was in Williams' power, but according to the movie itself, he was enlisted as a creative consultant, and he wrote the screenplay for it. So yeah, just, you know, do what you will with that information. Anyways, like the court case, this movie would be forgotten, and the Jurassic franchise, while far from perfect, is currently still going strong to this day, and is showing no signs of slowing down. As far as Williams goes, not much can be found on him and what he is doing today, but wherever he is and whatever he's doing, I hope he's doing well. Because despite this case that he was clearly in the wrong for, it's clear that he has a passion on educating youths through his books, and Dinosaur World is no exception to this. And that's always admirable.